Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Union City, Western, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind address the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, New East St. Augustine. Genetically speaking, I was influenced by the second law of motion of physics. That second law was discovered on the storyboard and discovered 330 years ago. That second law was rediscovered on the blackboard and mathematically discovered as the algebraic formula F equals MOA or force equals mass times acceleration. An American high school student writing a school report asked me to articulate my contributions to physics. I explained to her that I am an extreme scale computational physicist who experimentally discovered how to modernize and how that 330 year old second law of motion of physics is used to solve the most computation intensive grand challenge problems of extreme scale computational physics. I experimentally discovered how to modernize and how to code the second law of motion of physics into algebra and calculus. I experimentally discovered how to modernize and how to code that second law of motion and how to code it within a processor as well as code the algebraic representations of that second law of motion, as well as communicate via emails to 16-bit long addresses, the intermediate answers or the 64 binary thousand initial and boundary conditions of the companion initial boundary value problems that I sent and received across my new internet that I visualized as a global network of 64 binary thousand commodity processors. Metaphorically speaking, I felt that the as yet not fully formed new internet was like a baby moving in my intellectual womb, was shaped like the primordial laws of physics. Those laws of physics are as old as the universe. Those laws of physics are 13.82 billion years old. Those laws of physics hold the secret to how and why massively parallel processing makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest. I began programming the fastest supercomputers on June 20, 1974. I first gave these lectures of massively parallel processing in the early 1980s. In 1980, and in the foggy bottom neighborhood of Washington, D.C., I presented massively parallel processing supercomputing as my scientific research project. Back then, massively parallel processing was considered as a scientific blasphemy. The road to discovery is via the cross. For me, 1989 was the year of fire the year the massively parallel processing supercomputer became the fire we can't put out. For advocating parallel processing supercomputing 
I was promptly dismissed as a crank and I was ridiculed and mocked and reminded that Seymour Cray, the world's foremost supercomputer expert, said that, quote unquote, it will never work. Fast forward a decade after that rejection to July 8, 1991. I gave a parallel processing supercomputing lecture in Washington Sheraton Hotel in Washington, D.C. When I finished my lecture, the audience rose as one and gave me a standing ovation. I continued to give lectures on massively parallel processing supercomputers and gave them in the early 1990s when the two leading computer societies in the world appointed me as the ACM and the IEEE Distinguished Supercomputer Lecturer. In those lectures across American universities, I talked about the new algebra, the new calculus, and the new email message passing techniques that I used to experimentally discover how and why parallel processing makes computers faster and makes supercomputers fastest. And I talked about my invention of how and why to use that new supercomputer knowledge to build a new supercomputer that encircled a globe and encircled it in the manner the internet encircled a globe. I described necessary but not sufficient conditions that I experimentally discovered that makes computers compute faster. I focused on the massively parallel processing paradigm of supercomputing across a new internet. I did not focus on the serial computing paradigm of sequentially computing only within one processor. My idea of massively parallel processing was rejected and mocked in a November 1982 lecture that I gave at a conference auditorium that was a short walk from the White House, Washington, D.C. I was 28 years old when research computational physicists rejected my theoretical discovery of massively parallel processing. However, when I was 35 years old, my experimental discovery of massively parallel processing won the most coveted prize in supercomputing and became my signature discovery. Often, your ideas that get rejected when you are young could lead to discoveries that wins you awards when you are old. Some of those supercomputer scientists that rejected my experimental discovery of the massively parallel processing supercomputer and rejected it back in the 1970s and 80s have seen their children and grandchildren write a school report on my discovery that they rejected. That school report on the contributions of Philip M. Aguale to the development of the computer is my ultimate revenge. Insightful and brilliant lecture.